guys ready? Yes. So with no further ado, please help me welcome with this time, Emily Bet Rickards. Hello, familiar faces. Thanks all for coming. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb, because usually I don't even have it with me, but if that went off in a movie theater, I would be embarrassed. <laughs> so, welcome to Austin. Thank you. Is this your first time here? It's my second time here. Second time. So I wouldn't say I know it well. All right. But, you know, I'm getting to learn it. Yeah. <laughs> You've been able to, so like, Austin is all about this food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, have you been able to partake? So I had sushi yesterday, which I know isn't like the go-to in Austin. People are like, did you have barbecue? I'm like, oh, I actually had sushi last night. Um, but I think I'm going to get some barbecue tomorrow, so I am open to suggestions. Open, where is, it bar where is a good barbecue place? So that's I heard, Salt Lake. Salt Lake. That's okay. like been number one. What was that one? Lockhart? Okay. Oh, I've heard good things about Lockhart. Okay. Yeah. So have I. Uh, just now. Just now. <laughs> yeah, I've heard some really good things. So, uh, yeah, well, welcome. Uh, so I have to, 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 you know, ask you about your convention experience, isn't it? Is it weird seeing, you know, people that you've worked on shows with, and then you're like, oh, hey, I'm just going to see you, you know, just going to sit next to you for a weekend and then disappear and then see you again for a weekend? I think it's a real treat now for what we kind of get to do. Like, you know, if you work on a film or a TV show and you have a really great relationship with these people that you get to like, kind of learn about and love their lives and, you know, be a part right. and they're a part of yours. Um, you know, when that job is over, you do not see these people very often. I mean, right. as our jobs pertain, everybody's like living all over the world or working all over the world. You know, it's, it's part of the reason I think we love it. Um, but then that just means everybody's so spread out. And thank goodness for FaceTime. I mean, I get to right. FaceTime my dog quite a bit. But, <laughs> it's, but you know, it, it's great to kind of be reconnected in that way and, and be like, oh, yeah. Or, or someone you don't know that well be like, oh, yeah, like, I'd love to work with you again. Like, let's do something together. Like, things like that. Like, it can start turning your creative juices and, like, maybe you write something for with someone. It'd be great. Now, you say, uh, you know, living, you know, different places. Where do you call home now? I'm in Canada. You're in Canada? Yeah, I'm in BC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this is quite the... Uh, it's different, yeah. I mean, America, like, yeah. I'm always in your country, though. I love it here. Right, but it's like 118 degrees outside right You now. can't tell in here. It's actually quite this chill. Is, this is true. Yeah. I love I mean, the you're, in a, you're almost in a three-piece suit. Yeah, almost. Almost. Yeah, so Someone I love Someone call it a two-piece. So I love the air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, I want to start off uh, by talking about your early career. And, and I've talked to a lot of folks oh, who were involved in theater when, oh, yeah. you know, and, the, and that was their initial uh, step into acting and you're quite the same. So what initially drew you to acting and to the theater? I think when I was younger, you know, the thing I love about acting now, I necessarily didn't really know what I loved about it then. Um, you know, which is trying to get to understand the world and people better by this profession and this sort of divulging and um, getting to know other people's nervous systems in a sense. But when I was younger, I just like, I love, like, like every kid, like I just loved playing dress up. It was dress up every day. It was like finding new costumes. It was like we had, a, we were allowed to watch TV sometimes. So it was then trying on those voices and doing that character. And then, you know, the best thing, the closest thing you could do to that was stage because stage is accessible. Stage has been around for right. this long. That long, yes. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a blessing that we have that as humans, we're storytellers. And I think that that's the thing that ignites us to have us understand each other better. And that's what we want to do. Did you have a, did you have a favorite uh, play or a show that you enjoyed while growing up or even as you started into? Well, I loved Pippi Longstocking. I wanted to play Pippi. I think I was like a gremlin in the back. I loved Oliver. I wanted to play Oliver, but I was a little dirty, sort of dusted orphan in the back. Um, I loved Peter Pan. I wanted to play Peter. Can't remember who I pay played, though, to be totally honest. <laughs> definitely wasn't Wendy, and it definitely wasn't one of the siblings. So I'm going, like, was it one of the kids that was? There's, like, pictures of me. <laughs> lost um, boy? Yeah, like a lost boy, maybe. Um, but you know, those stories that are adventurous and fun that I think, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this as an adult, you kind of get, um, you kind of lose that sense of play sometimes, you know? And 
I think as a kid, it was just like, oh, let's just do that. Like Peter Pan's flying, like, let's fly. Right. And your parents are like, well, please keep your feet on the ground. Do not jump out of the third story window. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, you just like, you put that into your imagination and you can just go anywhere, you know? Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, Reborning, sure. the, the, uh, the show that you did? Yeah, my um, became a good friend of mine. Paul Pukowski, um produced this show. He called me up one day. He had seen a... Uh, <laughs> He had seen a, a one-woman show that I had sort of half-written in, uh, in Vancouver. <laughs> and he called me up one day, and I said, oh, I thought nobody saw that. And he's like, <laughs> he's like no, it's a, he's like, I wanted to ask you to do the show. Are you interested? He sent, he sent the play over, and we, um, we put it up in Vancouver in, in Canada. And then, um, you know, we did pretty, I think we did pretty well in terms of Vancouver shows do. We, it's harder to show, sell out shows there. We don't, we're not as trained to go see theater. So, you know, it did, it did well, but we didn't put it on for that long. I think we only ran for like two weeks. And then we brought it to New York and the Soho Playhouse, and we, and we did it there. Yeah, for a month, month and a half. The uh, midway through, our theater burnt down. Do you know this wait, story? No, 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 no. Hold on, wait, what? So, so halfway through, the the space above us, I guess, you know, was under construction, and it caught fire, and it, so the, the sprinklers in our area flooded the entire set, and all the stage, and all the chairs, it just like flooded. So we went down um, for a week. Only a week, but at the well, time I was like, we're, is, that, we're canceled, like, right. <laughs> we're, like we're done. Um, but they were able to put it back up, and we were up in a week, and then, uh, <laughs> and then we had sold out shows till the end. It was the middle soup of New York summer. It was. You think much the fire famous. helped? Like they were like, oh man, like I don't know, go man. Support but I, I can't remember how much we had left after that. We had a decent run afterwards, maybe like half of it. And then the last night on our sold out show, like middle soup of summer, like could eat the air with a spoon, our air conditioner broke. And so our whole audience and us were like just like dripping. And everyone was like, that was the most intense version of the show. I was like, cause it was so hot. <laughs> like everyone was just like hot, <laughs> you know? But it, you know, we always laugh like, oh, it must have added to it in some way. Did anybody joke that it should have been called the re-reborning? Yeah, the re yeah, probably yeah. right. Yeah, and Zay Dorn, who wrote it, um, was awesome and a big supporter of us, and had you know came out with us for dinner and stuff, and did a Q and A with us. And um, yeah, he's rad. I mean, he's prolific too, and his his wife as well, both excellent writers. I felt very blessed to be in their ether. Now you've done theater, you, you've done stage, you've done film, you've done television, you've done music videos. Oh yes. Is there a is there a preference oh, yeah. for, for those? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can only speak from the experience that I've had because I think okay. I love I love I love acting. Um, but the most acting I think you get to do is in theater because you have a full rehearsal process. So it's not just about the show. The show is fantastic, right? But the rehearsal process itself is um, probably still my favorite part. I mean, it's the it's the dressing up in your basement kind of thing, you know, with you know in a dusty, dark room somewhere that air conditioning is broken and hasn't been clean in a hundred years, and you have like these four people that are your new friends that you barely know that are trying on these characters as well, and you work that. You know, it's, it's art work, like it's work, and like that's the best part of it, because you just like get to dive in and like find all these treasures in the dust that somebody else wrote, and you're like, oh, that's what they mean. And sometimes you don't understand what the writer meant until like years later, you'll be walking down the street be like, oh, you know? I didn't actually swear. No. Nope. Caught myself. Nope. Nope. It's fine. It's fine. This is this is Austin. I'm pretty sure that. Well, I just you never know the age range. <laughs> so how do you approach different uh, mediums? You know, with these with your experience, does does each of them require a different set way of of thinking? I think each character is always new. I don't know if I have an answer to that question yet. I know that certain, I think as I get more seasoned and the more that I do, as we all do as we get older, we do get you know wiser. Um, hopefully we keep, still keep our sense of play. But there is that ability to be like, the more experiences that you have in the world, the more I'm able to bring to each character, right. in a sense. Um, there's just like more, I think there's more compassion, I think there's more empathy, I think there's more understanding. There's also experiences that I've had that I, I think can, you know, play a part and, or at least have taught me things that maybe I can then get a sort of a vein into the character. And um, yeah, each, each character is different. And then each character kind of 
teaches me something new that you know then gets applied. Like my process will change because something worked for me on the last one. I'm like, oh, I never thought about that before, using that before. Have you, have you had that breakthrough thought after a character, after you got done with a, with a character, and we're like, oh, maybe I should have done that. Let me use that on my next one. I think, yes. I think um, you can get out of a character, and or even just like a production, like a process. And there can be a frenetic energy to process sometimes, or production, I mean, from process too. But depending on the people you're working with and the speed and how much money the thing has and like who's panicking, who's not, that kind of, you know, you are protecting an art form right. as an actor. You like you are there to have fun and to lead and to be a part of a huge story that is so much bigger than yourself. And then you're also there to be the protector of your character because sometimes things move fast and you have to be like, wait, actually we need to slow down for a second because this is worth it. This is worth slowing down for. And so having a little bit more of an understanding of that as I get older has been something that I really, um, that I learn I think project to project. Do you like to watch yourself? Um, I don't dislike it. it. I mean, it's like it's like taking class, right? Like when we take class as an actor, you're mm -hmm. usually filmed, and then you watch it back, and you watch it back with you know peers and or your coach, and um, and and you're there for like healthy criticism, much like writing, right? Like you want to like somebody to read it, and then you want to read it back, and you want to like take those notes. And so when you do watch yourself, I think it's um, for me anyway, it's kind of like a tool. It's it's a learning experience, and. And be like, oh, that's so that character. That's actually not me. Or like, that's my mannerism, not her, right? right? So yeah, interesting. To, it's interesting. Yeah. To, it's not like, oh, I'm enraptured in the story. It's kind of like, oh, okay, that's like. Wait, so do you find yourself when you, if you are watching something you are in, only watching you? No. No. No, because you you spent all this time with people's work you admire, a director, cinematographer, the camera grip, the camera movement, the makeup, the wardrobe, everything. You're looking at everything going like, oh, man, I loved how they did that. They did that. Oh, I should call them if I ever do something like that. Um, oh, that camera move. I didn't know they were doing that. I was in front of the camera. That's awesome. They made me look amazing. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Or like, oh, that edited differently than I thought because the editor was so good. Like, it's a village. Like, right. you know. I only get to do what I do because 200 other people sign up to do the same thing. <laughs> like, you know, it's a, it's a village. Now, you, you talk about working with other people. Do you have a dream collaboration of maybe an, other uh, actors or directors or writers that you would love to work with? Sure, yeah, of course. I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of comedy. I'm a huge fan of, like, really long epic stories. I mean, there's... There's brains out there that are just, I can't wait to divulge and like watch more of their stuff or be around and, you know, art inspires other art. So yeah, right. of course. As you talk about comedy, I want to talk about uh, a web series that you did, Paranormal Solutions. Where oh you yeah. Genevieve well, Cream, yeah, right? Yeah, Genevieve Cream. Oh. Yeah, my pals put that on. They just came out with a new season. I was, unfortunately, I was working, so I couldn't be a part of it. But yeah, keep an eye out for it. PSI, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were, so uh, obviously you were doing like the, almost like a host narrator type, yes. type character. Do you, or have you had, obviously it's a comedy show, but have you had any real life paranormal experiences? Oh, uh, how funny. Interesting question. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, has, has anyone else? So any, like, is it, like, ghostly, or have you seen, like, UFOs? I haven't seen any UAPs. Um, I am very up-to-date with what's coming out in the media, though. Right. Love it. Love it. Love it or list it. Um, I've had some ghost experiences, nothing okay. too wild. My grandma was sort of, uh, like... <coughs> I wouldn't say she, she wouldn't necessarily call herself a seer. She was very Polish. But she would say things, and then me and my dad would be like, oh, like that came true like two days later. So we oh. kind of always had that little bit sprinkling around the family. And I think a lot of people have that story. You know, I don't think we know. I think we're kind of cut off from that in a sense. I think there's more to this than, than what we see. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, I don't know what I believe, but I feel like sure. there kind of has to be something Yeah, we can't be the there. only living life for us in the Right, I, I don't, yeah, I don't. There's, there's just no point. There's no way. 
<laughs> it's my opinion, but I don't think there's any way. Uh, and then I want to talk about how you ended up in a Nickelback music video. Uh, yes. Especially like, so Nickelback is obviously like the 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 big music meme, right? Like you know, everyone's sure, yeah. it's the the meme band, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how did <laughs> how did how did that come about? It was my first job. It was your first job. It was my first paid acting job. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, I went in for an audition. I can't remember if this was before. I think this was like an open casting call. So that means you don't have any representation yet. Um, I think it was like 17. I think it was 16 when I auditioned. No, 17 when I auditioned. And I went <laughs> to this to this casting director and there was an X on the wall and a camera and a dark room and a man behind the camera and then the female casting director. And I'm just like, hi, I'm Emily Beckhart. It's nice to meet you. I'm, Hello. <laughs> And she's like, okay, look at this X on the wall. And she's like, you're sad about the X. And I was like, okay. Now you're happy about the X. And now the X is disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first audition. I remember being like, oh, this is acting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I've been asking my mom to do this for 16 years. And this is where we're at. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't so bad. Not so bad. And you so and then you just happened to get the first gig you auditioned for. Yeah, well maybe it was, so I think I went to one audition before that. I can't remember which one came first because they probably were the same. One I found in like a newspaper. Like it was like a newspaper open casting call. We were out for my brother's birthday dinner, so that means it was May. Yeah, and then I I like saw it in the newspaper and I was like talking to my mom about it and I like had the thing out and I was like, listen, there's an open casting call, like we should go. And then she's like, it's right now, like we can't go. And I was like, oh, we have to go, we have to go right now. We like, my, I pretty much bullied my mom into like leaving dinner or leaving, it was brunch. It was like, we were eating like eggs and, and something at this roadhouse grill in, in Surrey. <laughs> Just we up and left and like went to Vancouver and that casting director was like, what's your name? You should go get an agent, contact this woman. Oh. But, but I'd like, my mom was, was she's like, how'd it go? I was like, well, I didn't get the part, but now we have to go find this agent. My mom was like, <laughs> <laughs> my mom just like so worried probably, like what am I getting myself into? Yeah, so like that the family dynamic of, uh, of supporting a, you know, uh, young person who wanted to get into the entertainment business. It sounds like your mom was a little hesitant, but still supportive. Yeah, I mean, they were both doctors, you know? My mom's a psychologist, my dad um, was a doctor as well, and I think it just didn't really make any sense. Like, I was allowed to do theater, but, like, oh. I was going to be an academic, or I was going to do something that was going to, you know, feel like I was secure, I guess. Following the family footsteps, yeah, right? Or, well, not necessarily, but just something that, you know, like, I was allowed to love it, but you just, I think they were worried that it wasn't going right. to, you know, I wasn't going to stick to it or, or something like that, and I think... You know, they were great. And then I think I had worn them down enough that at that dinner, I don't know, at that brunch, my dad was like, just take her. <laughs> just, just, gosh, she's been asking for like 16 years. I asked for a monkey, a spider monkey, for like six years. And I really thought I would wear them down from like, like, till I was like in grade six. I'm really glad that I didn't. Like, they had a better vision than me. <laughs> but I wonder if I took it up to 17. <laughs> you know? Maybe you should revisit that. No, those poor things need to be in the wild, you know? <laughs> I don't know. You said your your mom was a, a psychologist. Yep. So did you ever feel like? Oh yeah. Like yeah, like she was she was working on you. Oh yeah, I have stories. <laughs> she's such a great mom, but <laughs> she's my best friend, um, and she's very talented. She's very good at what she does, and yeah, oh yeah. But my favorite thing to yell when I was a terrible teen was stop shrinking me. <laughs> and she'd be like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm serious. I remember like yelling that and then like slamming my door and then opening it and again. I went through a bad phase. I mean, I'm sorry. You know? Yep. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think everybody does, right? I hope so. Everybody does. I hope so. <laughs> but uh, now you have your career. Uh, Some would say. So, <laughs> I know, do you have? Like, yeah, I guess you get to have a career. But yeah. you know, it's important that you can. You can do, like, you can do anything. Like, we have such a beautiful world that we live in, and, and like, you can do what you want to do. And that can also change. And you go and have your career, make careers, make a family, be freaking happy, 
do the thing you love, follow things, follow other things that you love, what you love can change, go and do, go and do it all, live, your, live the world. Would you have done anything differently along your path? Um, I love school, like I love studying, like I'm constantly reading and learning like anything, so I might have like done a college thing or something like that and I think when I was like testing out college I wasn't trying out things that I liked, like I did like anthropology and I was like it sounded interesting but it wasn't something I wanted to sit in a classroom for, you know, and I don't know, yeah, I think about, there's so many things that I want to do now, I think I'll go back to school now. Do you have, you, you've, you've mentioned, uh, you know, uh, books and things, do you have a favorite author, favorite book series, or a favorite book that, sure. that actually meant something to you significantly? Sure, well, I, I'll tell you what I just recently read. I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin. Someone must have read that by now. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was so well written and like young and fresh, and um, I was doing pretty intense character at the time, and so it took me it would like take me out. It would just put me, I'd be like, okay, this is my safe place for now, that's for me. Right. And like, you know, could just play in that world for a bit. Um, super effective. I love Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. I loved Love in the Time of Cholera. What else? I'm reading Did You Hear Mammy Died right now. It's a memoir by Seamus O'Reilly. It's very funny. Oh. Yeah, very, very funny. So far. So far. So, so far. I, I hate recommending books when you're like reading it because you're like, well, I actually don't know how it ends. So, <laughs> um, yeah, what about you? Uh, I read uh, a lot of uh, autobiographies from folks who are in the oh. entertainment industry. Oh, okay. Um, my most recent purchase was, don't laugh, uh, John Stamos. Okay, rad. Um, I feel if I want to uh, be successful in this endeavor and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I need to understand how sure, people think and, and the processes and sure, yeah. what made them successful. Uh, so I, I do read a lot of autobiographies. Amazing. What do you guys read? <laughs> Take out menus. Take out menus. What are you reading right now? Harry Potter. Nice. Yeah. I'm awesome. I mean, now. fantastic. Yes. Anything else? Ernest Klein. Ready Player Two. Oh, oh yeah. Ready Player Two, yeah. Ready Player Two's out. The, the book. Yeah. Yeah. Ready Player One, the book, was like crack cocaine. Like, just, it was so good. <laughs> not that I do, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually just not a man. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Don't hmm. read two. Don't read two. I read, I, yeah, I, I, I read Armada too, which was his other book. How Anything else? Yeah, great. Lincoln, he wrote Lincoln Highway oh, yeah. too, right? Yeah. Amortalis. Who else? Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Oh, what's that? It's a Gottman's book on relationships. Okay, cool. Okay. Anybody else? Speak up. All the. They made it into something. And it's not out yet. They have the trailer. Anybody else read the All the Light They Cannot See? Holy man. That was a book. Yeah, it really, it really was. <laughs> Anything else? I'm reading my you. Mom died by Sam you, yeah. Which one? It's called I'm Glad My Mom Died. By oh, Sam. yeah. I heard that's good. Okay, I got some new recs. If you think of them, just yell them out because I need new recommendations. I'm actually at the end of my recommendation list, oh. so I'm, I'm hungry. Okay. I get nervous when that happens because then if there's like a dry spell, then I'm just, <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> How do you? With, well, not working right now because of uh, what's going on, but how do you, but you are doing conventions, how do you balance that work life between acting, conventions, mm -hmm. home life, mm -hmm. and feel like you are mentally yeah. balanced? It's a learning process, I think, you know, I, I, I think we all need this. Like we all need to learn how to balance for ourselves. I don't know. I don't really care what profession you're in, or you know what you know what it looks like, uh, uh, what your life looks like. But you need to have sort of the ability to come back to yourself. And I think that that changes. I think we get used to our own tools, and when we go back to use those tools, sometimes to go back to ourselves, they're not actually there anymore. They don't work. You're kind of overdone with them. Um, so you have to like, you just have to be patient with yourself. And patience is something like I'm not innately born with. Like I, I as a as a conscious, you know, practice, I do try to meditate on that a lot and, and that kind of thing. And actually, meditation is a big, Meditate. like huge part of what helps me for sure. And my dog, 
And you're, is that your actual dog? Yeah, right that's there? my dog. My partner made me this shirt for my birthday. That is amazing. And like our whole family has them now. So on her birthday, we wore them. And we're like running around town with that is <laughs> shirts on with the dog. Who's just like we don't. She doesn't even know like it's her birthday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like so. Like I do the same thing with my dog. Like oh yeah, oh, yeah it's your birthday. And they're like we make her cake. We sing her happy. But she wears a tiara. No, oh, she shakes it off. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I fun. absolutely love that shirt. Thank you. I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so besides uh, your dog, do you have any other hobbies or projects that you work on? Uh, well, besides working. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know, we're so lucky where I live. We're so close to the ocean, so there's a lot of like, there's like a lot of ocean stuff. We're dipping in the ocean a lot. You know, we like to go surfing and um, hiking. A lot of time in nature. I write. Um, yeah, try to absorb, you know, good movies and stories and TVs and books and stuff. I'm pretty insular. Like I'm, okay. like I spend a lot of time with my, you know, close friends and stuff like that. But I spend a lot of time. I like spending a lot of time alone. Right. So I, I read and I, I write and I fiddle with my stuff in my apartment. And you know what I mean? Like I just, I'm happy that way. You've been. I think the word might be fortunate enough. Uh, fortunate enough Definitely. to to win a uh, not a two MTV Fandom Awards. Oh yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, now you get the actual trophies. What oh, what yeah. have you what have you done with these trophies? So I, I think I only I only ever received one. There was I don't know where it happened. So the second one I never saw it. But the but the one that I got ended up we were working. Steve and I were working and. Um, so does anybody does anybody know, not know what I'm talking about? So uh, Emily, you uh, you won a, a MTV Phantom Award for best ship. Yes. Best ship uh, with Stephen Amell, who's yeah. uh, who's here this weekend. But uh, this thing showed up in our trailer and. It's in like a box, like a shoe box. And I thought like, oh, shoes that I didn't order. Fantastic. From whom? I'm not sure. The thing weighs probably like 35 pounds, 40 pounds. So when you're expecting to pick up shoes, right. it's like when you take a sip of Coca-Cola, you thought it was going to be iced tea. Like it's shocking to the nervous system. And it is a, like it's a weapon. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's a black, it's a black stand with like a gold head on the top. And it like... <laughs> It's heavy. It's got some heft to it. Anyway, that's my story about it. Where Where do you keep it? Do you, well, like, do you, so okay. So you're like, that's my story. Hold on. No, I guess so it. it's it's at my place. Um, it's on a bookcase. Yeah, it's on a bookcase. But when I lived alone, <laughs> it was my sort of like a single woman living alone. It's gonna stay under the bed in case something ever happens. It's gonna be my weapon. <laughs> You know, be smart, ladies. Now they have like tiny pepper sprays and stuff. When I was 20, I don't even think that that was something in our repertoire. Right. Not that I find, like, I would be terrified to use one of those. Like, even when we're, when we're out hiking with bear spray and stuff, I'm like, this is definitely going to shoot back at me. <laughs> like, the bear might get it, but I will also get it. And then the bear and I are both going to be mad. <laughs> and it's going to end terribly for one of us, and it might be the bear, but then, you know, it's fine. <laughs> oh. Poor bear. Sweet poor, bear. Poor sweet bear. <laughs> Uh, another thing I want to talk about, and I think this is really cool, but the the, the way you were able to give back uh, to your uh, school, the Vancouver uh, oh, yeah. Film School, and you had a scholarship, yeah, a scholarship fund. Uh, was that your idea? Was that their idea? It was their idea. They came to me and they asked if um, I went there. I went to Vancouver Film School for I did their Acting Essentials program, which was three months, um, and in that. Three-month program, Andrew McElroy, who's my acting coach, taught one class at the end of our semester, and I was about to do their um, year class, which a couple friends of mine did, and, and you know, it was amazing, but I just magnetized towards this man who's become a huge mentor and friend in my life, and I ended, I've studied with him my entire life since, and I owe VFS for that as well. They, um, you know, they have a, they've had a film school in Vancouver when no one else was doing film school, and they had, like, you know, they celebrate the arts and celebrate people that are there, and, um, yeah, so they asked me if I would sort of choose the winners for, I think it was three people I got to choose out of all their um, school auditions, because they have a lot of international students. And um, yeah, I get to watch all these auditions and kind of do what I was able to like, kind of do, like kind of whatever that first step was. And going there was a huge step for me. Like it was a massive step, you know, and it was, 
just like finally getting able to do that. You know, they taught movement, they taught, we did some Shakespeare, we did like, it was like getting kind of everything that I didn't know went along with acting, like voice classes, movement, um, scene study, blocking, like all this stuff I had no vernacular for because I didn't grow up in it. You know, I was just a kid on a stage being like, can I play Pippi Longstockings? And someone being like, no. And I was like, okay, but I'll play in the back then, you know? That's, that's great that you had to help people fulfill their dreams. Yeah, it was, and, it was and, awesome. I mean, because, uh, you know, money isn't free. And sometimes, no, it's not. It, you know, it, it, what, it, what, what's, what blocks people from achieving their dreams. And you were able to help facilitate yeah. with that. And I think that's a... Uh, it think was that's really amazing. fun. I mean, I would, I would do a thousand things like that in a heartbeat. I think that that is one of the most fulfilling things I've gotten to do. Now, before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about these conventions and meeting your fans. Sure, yeah. Uh, has meeting your fans, people coming to you and, and telling you and talking to you about your character, has it influenced your, your previous thoughts about your character and, and now what it might mean to other people? I mean, yes, yes, of course. But I think where my brain went was when you when you come up to me and talk to me about Felicity, like I feel like like my best friend has arisen, kind of like I don't want to say like from the dead, but she's like alive again, you know. And like, there's something in there that her ability to live on is amazing. There's something to be said about that, and the writers like. You know, every, every time you anybody asks me to write a quote and put Felicity Smoke by, I like I want to put like Beth Schwartz, who was like one of our main writers, and that kind of thing, because it was like they wrote these lines for this woman so that I could say them, so that she could live forever. Like it goes back, it just goes so far back, right? And a team of people, I mean, a, a village of people, get to you know kind of make this character, and I just I think it's so special, and I'm just always so gracious that you guys bring her back to life for me. Are you sometimes shocked at the stories that people say, oh, you know, I watch this, I watch, you know, yeah. the well, like... Well, what's cool this time is a couple people have come up to me and said that you're all watching, you're watching it in order of how they were released within the whole Arrowverse. So, like, Supergirl, Flash, all that stuff, Legends. And, like, watching it like that, like, I don't think there's anything else. Like, I can't even think of anything else you could watch like that. Like, I was like, that's so cool. Like, that, like... We were just making a show. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's like, now, like, I think about it, because I can see it from the other side now, too, um, because you guys give me that. You guys bless me with that view. But, yeah, I, I think it's so amazing, and I, I can't thank you guys enough. Like, it just, it opens my world and, and, like, touches my heart that Felicity can kind of be a part of that. That's great. And then, along the same lines of meeting people, and this is, my, this is always my favorite question to ask, is when meeting somebody or seeing somebody, let's say at a convention, whether it's in the green room, the table next to you, or perhaps even at a studio shooting, has there been, who has been that one person that you saw, you met, and you absolutely fanboyed out about? Um, maybe you either couldn't speak or you spoke way too much, put your foot in your mouth. I mean, I met... Donald Glover like ages ago and I just I ended I shouldn't even say I met him I ended up standing beside him and I walked away <laughs> he doesn't still doesn't know who I am <laughs> like I, I just was like I was at a party and I was just like this You, I think I've just been like listening to his album for like weeks on end in my car, and then I'm just like in this surreal world at 20, like little Canadian girl going to Los Angeles and like end up at a party, and I'm just like, absolutely not. This is not real. <laughs> like, I'm not in my car right now. I'm going home. I'm drinking my tea that my grandmother made me, and I'm going to bed. <laughs> Any regrets about not saying anything? No, not really. The story's better. <laughs> like it's just, like I just like remember that, you know. And um, I was a big fan of Aisha Tyler, who's like one of my closest friends and confidants. And she, when we first met, she was moderating our panel for like Paley Fest or something, season two. I walked on stage and I just looked at her and I was like, I'm a big fan. She's like, I'm a big fan. And we have a picture of our meeting. And so to be so close with someone that like, oh, just it makes me want to cry. Like to be so close with someone and have a picture of your meeting. That's awesome. Like there's nothing. I don't have that with anyone. Maybe my mom, and I'm like a baby, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? 
Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, you're right. I don't think I have a picture of me actually meeting it, anybody. It's wild because you don't. When you meet someone, you never know who's going to change your life, right? And so I think about that when I do these cons, right? Like you, you learn something from everyone. I also, I read this study recently, whether or not it's true, that we're only supposed to be familiar with 100 faces. And this is a study on like presence and being present in your body no matter where you are. And as like, at the max, we're only supposed to be able to recognize 100 faces. And the theory is, is that we're not as present because when we walk down a busy street in New York, it actually costs us a lot. It's expensive to be so present around 400 people at once. And so we, we lose that. And as we get older, we lose that even more. And I, th I, you know, reading this and and then coming to, you know, knowing doing the con and that kind of thing, I just always, re I always remind myself that like you just learn, you could learn something from anyone, and and you will learn something from everyone if you're open to it. And so that practice of presence, I think, maybe brings us back to your old question too: is like, how do you come back to yourself? And right. I think it's just about listening to other people. <laughs> Sometimes it's about getting out of the you know, the monkey mind. Are you a, a collector, a buyer of anything? When you go to these shows, do you ever bring stuff home? No, not really. I'm trying to minimize. Okay. Like, I constantly Marie Kondo our apartment, <laughs> and my partner's like, well, you actually don't need to get rid of that. I'm like, we don't need it. <laughs> like, we might need it. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a pot we use every day. Like, we don't need it. <laughs> and he's like, what are we going to cook on? I'm like, we're throwing out the oven. It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? Like... Oh my gosh! Did the only things I keep are like tea and electrolytes. So like it's just the cupboard is just like tea and electrolytes. <laughs> like, have why you, don't you get rid of some of these? I'm like, I'll you, eat them. <laughs> why don't you just eat them? Have you ever collected anything? Like, has there ever been? When I was a kid. I collected like gemstones, like rocks. I should. They were rocks. I collected rocks. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, they were gemstones. They were beautiful. <laughs> they were from the exotic beaches of my backyard. It's like, no, they were they were stones from different gravel playgrounds. Like, let's be honest. This looks so cool. Um, and then I loved Beanie Babies <laughs> when I was younger. And I just watched that movie. And I was like, I was a total marketing sucker. Like, I was the 90s kid that was like, Mom, I'm spending my entire allowance. I'm getting the cow. I'm getting the dolphin. And I'm getting the kiwi from New Zealand as soon as I have enough money. And she was like, you want to spend it? And I'm like, I don't know. An acting book? Apparently you're going to do that when you're older. <laughs> like, <laughs> who, who here has yeah, Beanie who, Babies? Who's got them? Still has Beanie Babies. Yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So I just watched that movie. Did anybody watch that movie? I did not know that story. Did anybody see it? Yeah, it, it's a it's a wild story. Like I had I had no idea. I'm gonna have to go check that out now. I think it's called like Beanie. Well, just type in Beanie. You'll find oh. Beanie Bust. Beanie Bubble. Beanie Bubble. Oh, I, I've had. Okay, so I have heard of it. I just haven't seen it. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, I just want to ask, what is your best piece of advice that you've ever received? <laughs> I know it's cheesy, but like, be yourself. And I, I think that's harder than we think sometimes. Um, I, it's not even like be yourself. It's find out who you are, I think is really what that means. It's like find out who you are and then just be that. It, uh, it's really, I, I, I know it's kind of just like simple, but it really does mean something. I, I agree. It I, probably means everything. I tell people to take, uh, uh, my students to take a Neogram personality yeah, test yeah. because uh, I tell them before other people can find out who you, who you are, you need to find out who you are. So I think that's uh, yeah. a perfect sentiment. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're almost done with our time here. Are you going back to your table after this? I am not. We are done. You're done, but you'll be here tomorrow. I am not. Oh, this you're not it. here. This is it. This is my this is my farewell tour. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is my farewell tour. Um, Bye. Okay, I'll see. I'll see if I can stick around for like 15 more minutes. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I have a timeout, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. I mean, planes kind of take yeah, off they uh, when they, 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 they when off. when they want to, not yeah. when you want to. Exactly. Uh, so, any any last words before we wrap up? Well, yeah. I hope that I know this was different than some of our usual cons. I know we didn't get to do a Q and A because there's a lot of Voldemort's and things like that. But I'm 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 grateful for this and thank you. Really, it was really wonderful working with you. And absolutely. Um, seriously, book recommendations. I'll take them, and I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Yeah.